Hello, my name is uh, Eric Sensen. I am a senior scientist in Sintef Ocean and a PhD candidate in the Department of Engineering Cybernetics at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. I am here today to talk about the design of a novel biosensor implant for farmed Atlantic salmon. The authors behind this work consist of myself, in addition to Associate Professor Martin Føre, Professor Lise Randeberg and Associate Professor Jo Arve Alfredsen, who are all affiliated with NTNU. Note that all animal experiments mentioned during this presentation have been approved by the Norwegian Food Safety Authorities. Atlantic salmon farming consists of two main stages, a land-based freshwater stage followed by a seawater stage. The complete production cycle lasts approximately 36 months and is concluded by slaughter and processing in land-based facilities. A prevailing challenge is to determine the fish's welfare, which is negatively affected by, for example, pathogens, parasites, and stress-inducing handling. Today, fish welfare is largely evaluated based on manual observations of fish behavior, parasite prevalence, biological sampling, and production mortality rate. Despite such efforts, 15 to 20% of all farmed Atlantic salmon are lost before slaughter. For ethical, economic and sustainability reasons, this situation must be improved by enabling objective observation of behavioural and physiological responses, thus enabling improved insight into the welfare state of fish. This knowledge can then be used to counter negative welfare trends in production. One approach to achieve this insight is to use miniaturized electronic sensor systems measuring welfare-related parameters on an individual level. Such implants either store data internally and must be retrieved for data download and processing, or transmit data to underwater receiver units using acoustic signaling for near real-time monitoring. When applied to Atlantic salmon, such sensor systems are usually surgically implanted into the peritoneal cavity or belly of the fish. Parameters measured by such implants can be correlated with stress hormones in blood samples because elevated stress hormone levels in blood are associated with deteriorated welfare, a proxy for stress and thus welfare can be achieved. Current off-the-shelf implants relevant for free-swimming fish in a production setting enables measurement and derivation of behavioral parameters. Examples of behavioral parameters are acceleration-based activity proxies, temperature and depth preference, and more recently, Doppler-based swimming speed and position triangulation. Direct physiological measurements for this sensing context are scarcer, however, and are limited to heart rate derived from an electrocardiogram. Because we aim to expand our knowledge of the relationship between behavior, physiology and stress levels, we have developed a new implant. This implant combines an expanded sensor suite for behavioral parameters as well as adds to the list of physiological parameters which can be monitored in free-swimming Atlantic salmon. When designing an electronic implant for fish for such use cases, trade-offs must be made between cost, size, functionality and longevity. We have focused on designing the smallest possible implant using only off-the-shelf electronic components to constrain cost and ensure future component availability and redesign flexibility. With these trade-offs and use cases in mind, we designed an implant consisting of a primary module handling power management and data processing and storage. In addition to the microcontroller and memory, it carries a whole effect sensor, a temperature sensor, and a nine axis inertial motion unit. These sensors combine capabilities commonly found across brands of implants, as well as expands upon their motion sensing capabilities, usually constrained to acceleration with rotation rates and compass direction. Our implant's secondary module is currently equipped with a MAX86150 biosensor module capable of measuring ECG for heart rate estimation and a photoplatysmogram, or PPG for short, which is the timely change in light absorption in tissues as blood rushes through it, changing its color with a cardiac cycle. The PPG allows us to calculate an extra heart rate estimate as well as an estimate of blood oxygenation level in arterial blood. In our implementation, the electronic hardware measures 10 by 27 millimeters and is here seen with the MAX86150 biosensor facing the viewer. 
Gold ECG electrodes are soldered to the back of the biosensor module PCB and exit the encapsulation to achieve electrical connection with the fish. Note that the wires connected to the PCB in the background in this image are for testing purposes and are not part of the final design. The ECG electrodes are integrated in the encapsulation as seen here. The encapsulation measures 13 by 47 millimeters and weighs 9.4 grams, including battery. In the standalone implementation, the wires seen in the back of the electronic hardware image are replaced with a flex print with pads to which the battery can be connected using a conductive foam adhesive. The flex print includes a connector for programming and data download. The encapsulation includes a suture canal to fix the implant in its proper position inside the fish during surgery. This implementation allows us to log PPG, ECG, acceleration, rotation rates, compass heading, temperature, and magnetic field strength. A 32-bit EFM32TG11 microcontroller operating at 32.77 kHz handles data collection, processing, and storage to an 8 megabyte flash memory. The microcontroller sets the sensor-dependent sampling rates, while its real-time clock and calendar can be used to schedule sampling with respect to start delay and continuous or duty cycle sampling plans. The implant is powered by a 170 mAh CR13N3 volt battery. Measuring ECG in fish is challenging because implant movement can change the electrical sensing conditions to such an extent that the signal is lost. Providing a more reliable heart rate measurement is therefore an advantage. A demonstration of the biosensors EK. <coughs> <clears throat> measuring, <clears throat> measuring ECG in fish is challenging because implant movement can change the electrical sensing conditions to such an extent that the signal is lost. Providing a more reliable heart rate measurement is therefore an advantage. A demonstration of the biosensor's ECG capability and derivation of heart rate from the PPG was recently described and published in Animal Biotelemetry. The purpose of this test was not only to investigate if heart rate can be estimated from PPG, but also to determine where in the peritoneal cavity PPG should be measured. The biosensor was tested in fish in two different positions and four orientations per position as seen on the left and heart rate obtained using autocorrelation, peak detection, and time differencing as seen on the right. The top curve is the PPG raw data, the middle curve is the extracted PPG pulse and detected peaks, while the bottom curve is the measured ECG with detected peaks. The results from these tests indicate that PPG should be measured in the forward part of the peritoneal cavity in the direction of the heart. This result is the reason why our implementation measures the PPG in a forward direction. Deriving heart rate from the PPG provides an alternative heart rate estimate using a sensing principle which is independent from ECG, thus enabling more reliable heart rate measurements in fish in the future. Because the biosensor measures PPG for two wavelengths, 660 and 880 nanometers, the sensor can, in principle, be used for pulse oximetry, where oxygen saturation in arterial blood can be derived from the characteristics of both wavelengths. It is very challenging to derive SpO2 from PPG, and knowledge on the optical properties of the tissues within the sensing volume is crucial, so an accurate mapping between the PPG characteristics and SpO2 can be identified. In humans, this mapping is usually obtained empirically using reference oximeters, providing a baseline for comparison when human volunteers breathe a desaturated gas mixture. As far as we know, no reference oximeter for fish exists. We have therefore used a combination of direct measurements on saturated and desaturated whole blood samples and measurements of the optical properties of Atlantic salmon blood to obtain a preliminary mapping function. 
using this preliminary mapping function on PPG data obtained during in vivo challenge tests with desaturated water on anesthetized fish, we can see that the red curve for calculated SpO2 goes down when the green curve for dissolved O2 in water is low and vice versa. We aim to improve this preliminary mapping by using the same results in simulations of light propagation in relevant tissues. Although this is promising, work remains to validate these results and to improve accuracy. This validation involves testing our implant in fish swimming in a controlled environment such as the swim tunnel seen here. Such tests are important because we expect motion artifacts to affect the PPG. These effects must be investigated and when we know more about their characteristics, our compensation approach using the inertial motion unit and appropriate filtering techniques must be developed. Additional further work involves modifying the firmware to process more data in the microcontroller, so only the result must be stored to conserve memory. An adjacent activity will be to optimize energy consumption for improved longevity. These activities are particularly relevant for data collection over extended periods of time. Although our implementation has a very common shape for fish implants, it may be necessary to revise the encapsulation shape when having accumulated more experience using our implant. It may, for instance, be possible to shrink the physical design. It is also possible that the ECG electro design must be revised based on the results from future testing. As a final mention, because our implant carries a full 9-axis IMU, this allows us to compensate for unwanted acceleration contributions from gravity and rotation. We therefore wish to derive and compute a gravity and rotation compensated fish activity proxy we expect to be more accurate compared to that which is possible using acceleration alone. Thank you for watching my presentation. It has been my pleasure to talk to you today and I hope you found our work interesting. Goodbye and have a continued nice day.